You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Queen Gaming, and as some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Uh, well, I reached the end of my playthrough for Fatal Force uh, just until it gets updated. So until it gets updated, I am checking out Far Beyond the World. I actually looked at looked into this one from some suggestions from you guys. Uh, this and Shelter, and I'm, I'm choosing this one for now. Um, I really, really like the look of this one. Now, this is the is an actual isekai furry uh, uh, visual novel, not anime. This is definitely not an anime. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I really don't know what to expect, so let's jump right into this, shall we? I don't know what this is going... what's going to happen in this new playthrough or in this game at all. I don't know what kind of adult content I can expect. Okay. Complete nothingness. I feel as if nothing existed before this moment. No memories of anything other than this utter void. I don't know how long I've been here. Time seems to stretch into eternity. The rhythmic thumping that accompanies me starts to fade away. I somehow know it's the sound of my very own heart being silenced. As if death embraced me. Is this what death feels like? How can I be dead if I haven't even lived? I cannot feel anything, summon any emotion. It's just me in this thorough nothingness. Finally, silence envelops me, but it is not death. Whatever's happening, it does not offer me release from this empty awareness. Suddenly I hear hundreds of whispers, one voice really, but boundless and out of time. It folds onto itself, forming incoherent chatter. The language sounds so foreign, yet it speaks to my very core. Bits and pieces flood my mind like a tidal wave. Among the onslaught of chaos, I sift through these strange words, failing to find anything intelligible. Excruciating pain surges through my mind, like a blunt force to the head. The key. I want to scream in agony as my entire being is set aflame by those words. Then the black canvas pulls over my eyes. I can see the darkness now, cold and pitch black. Black stone. I know the surge fills my mind with painful awareness. I know what stones are, what earth is. This void is not native to me. I come from a world beyond this nothingness. I am trapped here. You. I suffer another torment. I feel myself materialize in the abyss, my body becoming the edge of existence. I am no longer floating in nothingness. Instead, I am immobile, restrained, and left in the dark. I must break free. This isn't right. This isn't right. Wake up. The whispers intensify as if urging me on. Am I dreaming? Is this a nightmare? Wake up. Their anger rises and the command is harder to ignore through the agony caused by each word. I want to wake up. I do. Wake up. Just save it right there. The light rushes into my eyes as if I'm stricken by lightning. I know, my, I know what lightning is. I can picture it crackling across the stormy sky. I sure have, I'm sure I've seen a storm before. What flashes so bright that for a split second everything turns white. Pretty much like now. I'm forced to squint as my vision doesn't adjust. Everything is so blurry and white, I could have sworn I'm starting in, I'm staring into the sun. Sun. I can almost recall its warmth. I'm certain I belong here, in this world. The void that held me moments ago slowly fades into my memory. It was just a dream. And now that I'm awake, I will return to my normal life, whatever it may be. Despite trying my hardest, I cannot remember anything concrete about my past. The pain in my eyes lingers, and I want to shield myself from the glare. However, my body is numb. I try to raise my hand, to bring it over my head, but it only flops in place. My heart speeds up at a horrid realization. I cannot move. I try to speak, but it only really comes out as a mumble as I struggle against my limp body. Am I paralyzed? My fingers twitch as I concentrate on them, tapping at the soft mattress beneath me. No, I'm just... frozen. I can feel that I woke up from a long, deep sleep, and my body just now started thawing. 
Somehow I managed to use my lifeless hand as a pendulum to flip myself to the left side. I arched my back, crawling like a snake in the bed, trying to get to the back, trying to get to the edge. Finally, my eyes adjust, and I can see the room. Raising my head is a challenge, but eventually I manage to have a proper look around. I can see the door in front of me. There's only one window. It has a wide, cluttered ledge and lets in the light of an early afternoon. There isn't much in the way of furniture, just a wooden chest next to the door, a cupboard to the left, and a large wardrobe next to the window. I can't help but notice how dirty everything is, with cobwebs in every corner and dust filling the air. Despite my memory loss, I am sure of one thing. This isn't my room. This is not my home. Where the hell am I? I struggle a bit further, still very much numb, although I can feel life returning to my limbs. I push myself over the edge, which I fast realize was a mistake as I fall hard to the wooden floor with a loud thud. I almost pass out at the force with which my head slams to the slams the boards, but the cold of the ground instantly seeps to my naked skin, bringing me back to my senses. I try to collect myself from the floor, pushing hard with both hands, but it feels as if I'm lifting a boulder. All I, manage is, all I manage to do is sit up in a groggy fashion, noticing my naked upper body. At least my lower part is covered by what I think is a loincloth, which is strange to say the least. There is a sound of heavy footsteps approaching from the adjacent room. I gaze at the doors anxiously, expecting some sort of familiar face coming to my aid. Ooh, excuse me. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm away with my family, even though I can't remember who my family are. Everything feels so strange and out of place. The door cracks open, and my wishful thinking is snuffed out by a large wolf creature entering the room. Hey, hey, good looking. He is covered in thick black fur, standing upright on his hind legs with torso chiseled like a marble statue. For a split second, my attention drifts to a round black stone resting on his chest, filling me with an odd sense of dread. Oh, maybe this isn't a good guy then. However, that's quickly replaced by a more rational fear, as I shiver at the sight of the wolf's clawed paws tensing up in anticipation. The beast snarls, gazing at me with his wild red eyes, almost as if looking right through me, and I can't help but stare back at his massive snout filled with jagged fangs. My fucking luck! I told him not to leave me alone! I don't even register that he speaks, feeling weakness overtake me. I must be dreaming. This is a nightmare! Let me save it right here. Finally, I win the inner battle and manage to regain control of my frozen body. I throw myself up against the cupboard, climbing it, climbing it like a cliff. Instinctively, I pull out a drawer, hastily rummaging through its contents to find anything I can use to defend myself. Amongst the clothes and trinkets, I grasp on something hard with a handle and pull it out, holding it right in front of me with both hands. Man, my mind just went right in the gutter! <laughs> oh, I don't think that's a sword. What are you doing? The wolf regards my weapon with mild contempt. It's a wooden... Oh, it's a comb. Okay, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Despite how foolish I look, I still hold it out in front of me, jabbing at the air to make the beast aware I mean business. Before I can react, he's already on me. Oh, sorry. One paw grabbing my, man my neck and pushing me hard against the wall. My head bounces off it like a ball, and I nearly drop my only weapon. That's when his massive paw squeezes my left wrist, the pressure he applies to my bones taking the floor from underneath me. My legs are noodles, and I simply hang from his hold. Let. It. Go. He reiterates through his fangs, snarling straight into my face. I tear up as he squeezes harder, almost to the breaking point. Without a choice, I let the comb go, and it flops to the floor. The next thing I know, I'm being swung onto the bed like a rag doll, my weight meaning nothing to the beast. I bounce off the bedding, scraping my shin bone on the wooden frame. The pain jolts to my head and I gasp, quickly grabbing my leg and pulling it close to myself. Fuck, it hurts! It almost makes me forget about the still-throbbing wrist. No, 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 kitty. No, no, no. Let me try to get up here. <laughs> now stay there if you know what's good for you. I'll be back in a moment. The wolf huffs at me in annoyance and hastily leaves the room, closing the doors behind him. What the fuck is going on? Why can't I wake up? I lie there in bed, huddled in pain and crying, desperately trying to end this nightmare, but with no success. The pain lessens, and my panic slowly switches from me switches me from fight to flight mode. I need to escape. I can hear the beast rummaging in the next room, clearly looking for something. 
I look towards the window and realize that I don't want to find out what he's looking for. His current preoccupation is my best chance to get out of here. I try to step off the bed as quietly as I can. Tiptoeing, I move closer and closer towards the only route of escape. I freeze up as one of the boards creaks, almost as if on cue. My eyes trail to the doors and I weigh my options. Instincts overtake me and I jolt to the ledge, immediately locating the latch locking the window, but I cannot open it because of all the clutter. Oh lord! In a panic, I begin brushing everything off with a complete abandon, racket echoing across the empty room. I can see the forest in front of me, freedom just within my reach. Help! Help! I yell out as I hear the beast storm in, the doors flying open with a bang. What the fuck? Somebody help me! Not even a second later, the entire world turns as if I were on a merry-go-round. My stomach moves up to my throat, and I fly across the room with the force of the spin. I gasp as my back, I gasp as my back strikes the bed again. Despite the padding, it's a very rough landing. But, but before I even register the world of pain my entire body is in, I see the black shadow sweep above me. The entire bed shakes as the beast lands on top of me, his powerful paws flanking me on both sides. He presses his snarling muzzle into my cheek, forcing my face to one side and pressing it deeper into the bedding. I guess we have to do it the hard way. My eyes well up as I feel him dribble onto my neck with each hot puff of air. Please, somebody! He cuts me off with his paw, pressing it hard to my mouth. Oh lord. You don't look happy. I continue my muffled shouts as I cry in horror. Wake up! Why can't I wake up? Shut up or I'll rip your fucking throat out! The beast growls, grabbing my neck with his other paw, the weight of his upper body now fully pressing down on me. He is squeezing my windpipe shut without even trying. I want to gouge his eyes out to throw him off, but I am unable to reach his muzzle to reach his muzzle over the bulging muscles of his arms and shoulders. I clamp my eyes shut as my body begins to convulse, partly due to hysteria, but mainly because I am desperately trying to draw air. Finally, my hands go limp and I fall lifelessly to the bed, ending my pathetic defense. I will die here. I don't want to die. My muffled screams begin to fade as the agonizing pain fills my empty lungs. SHUT UP! He pushes harder, increasing my desperate tremors. My body becomes unresponsive and I lose any sense of self. I can hear his angry growl hush above me just as everything begins to fade. I slowly return to the darkness, again occupied, again accompanied only by my beating heart. Oh dear. My mind stirs with a slight discomfort stretching across my entire body. My mouth is dry and there is tension in my joints. I now realize my arms are twisted behind my back, arching it upwards in an uncomfortable way. I can feel as if something unpleasant was stuck at the back of my throat. Did I fall asleep like this? I'm not sure what happened. I think I was having a bad dream. Something about a werewolf in a cabin in the woods. Yeah, okay, epic. I don't give a damn about that. I seem to be having a lot of a lot of night terrors lately, and I'm glad I can finally wake up. Let's, uh... There we go. But as I open my eyes, it's clear that the nightmare isn't over yet. It's the same dingy little room with a small window, black fur and fangs flashing through my mind. Oh no, the savage attack was not a dream. I try to jump up, but both my hands and ankles are tied together with a length of rope bounding me like a parcel. I can't roll to either side without dislocating my shoulder. There's no breaking free from this. When I try to speak, I realize I'm gagged with a dirty cloth, which explains the dryness and a weird briny aftertaste. I look around the room, trying to jog any memory of this place. Was I kidnapped? Is this some sort of messed up prank? I try to rationalize my situation. However, the more I think about it, the more cold sweats stop my the more cold sweats stop my body. Why can't I remember anything else in this cabin? Is anyone even looking after me? I can hear someone in the other room, heavy footsteps pacing impatiently back and forth. I gaze at the door with dread, almost certain it is the same beast that just attacked me. Then I hear someone else enter the cabin. Finally! What took you so long? The cold voice confirms my suspicion. It's that brute. I had to avoid my father all day. He only just left. The hunt should buy us time at least until the morning. How's the human? Peachy. I frown at the comment. Peachy indeed. What do you mean? He's awake? See for yourself. There's a rush of padding toward the door and I panic as a massive gray wolf enters the room. He 
save it right here. Oh, he's good looking. I guess he looks a trite more friendly than the other one. He's dressed in some sort of medieval armor, a green cloak falling from his shoulders. Initially, he has an excited expression, but, is immediate, but it immediately sours at my predicament. He throws an angry gaze towards the black male who tied me up. What the hell did you do to him? The human should have been tied up to begin with. He tried to escape. When I see that the brute, I want to scream, to run away, but all I can do is wiggle and mumble. The gray wolf approaches me, looking down carefully over my body. Are those choke marks? He's all bruised. I saved our pelts, you idiot. My eyes open wide at the, as the creature's arguing at the front of the at the foot of the bed. Seeing one of those wolves was bad enough, but seeing them both sends a chill down my spine. All I can do is stare, motionless. They are both enormous, much taller than what I consider natural, with broad shoulders making their entire posture more than intimidating. And that's without accounting for all the fangs and claws. I'm terrified. I avoid looking directly at them, but a shadow moves in the corner of my eye. The gray wolf is approaching me slowly, paw extended towards my face. Help! Someone help me! I try to call out, but all I accomplish are muffled whines through the gag. My crushed windpipe feels as if I've swallowed a stone. A painful lump stuck halfway down my throat thanks to that monster. Shh. The gray wolf tries to shush me, but I continue to yelp despite how much it hurts. Help! I want to wake up! Please, be quiet. His soft pleading almost causes me to stop, but I can hear a deep growl behind him. Just fucking kill it before everyone hears this. And just like that, the most instinctual cry comes to me. The one I always fall upon in a seemingly unending nightmare. Mom! Mommy! This is a bad dream. It has to be. Stop snarling. You're making it worse. The gray wolf snaps at his companion and then gets onto the bed. It's just hovering right above me. Being exposed like this makes me shout out even more. However, his massive paw gently presses down on my face. Although he's trying to silence me, this wolf is going about it differently than the previous one. His other paw reaches behind my head, holding me securely and gently ruffling my hair. Shh. His greenish eyes plead with mine, and I find his expression and demeanor almost soothing. Please, calm down. I notice he begins to match his breath with mine, his massive chest expanding in the same rhythm. He is guiding me down from the edge of panic, and for whatever reason, I follow. All I want is to feel safe, and somehow he manages to make me feel just that. Slowly I let down my fight, my muffled voice getting fainter and fainter. That's right. He encourages me. Nothing's going to happen to you, I promise. I'm going to let you go, but you have to stop screaming. I look at him, wide-eyed. He speaks slowly at me, enunciating every word in an odd fashion. If anyone finds out you're here, he gestures with a clawed finger towards his neck, making an unmistakable slit mark. I guess he means I would be killed. Do you understand? I don't, but I'm in no position to inquire further, so I simply close my eyes and take a deep breath. Good. It's okay. His voice is oddly comforting, as if I've heard it before. Let me fix this. My mind tells me to run, however, my body is powerless. I must trust him. There is no other choice. Besides, if he wanted to hurt me, he would have done so already. He removes the paw from my face, his furry fingers brushing the cloth fastened around it. I can see his claws carefully prick at the rim. I'll take this off, but you must promise me that you won't scream. My eyes tear up as I watch his massive jaw open in the rhythm of his words. I think it only now sinks in that those beasts indeed talk. You can't be serious. The brute protests, looking at me with a murderous gaze, but the gray wolf ignores him. He looks expectantly at me, bringing a finger to his lips to emphasize that I need to stay quiet. Okay? I nod, closing my eyes. As he removes the cloth, pulling the bundle out of my mouth, I gasp in relief, tears flowing down my cheeks freely. When I try to catch my breath, the gray wolf, the gray wolf inspects the material with which I was gagged, looking back at his con- a damn roach on my desk. Damn, I flicked that I flicked that little sucker across the room. Looking back at his companion without it with a disgusted expression. Is this my I had to improvise. The black wolf shrugged. Wait, am I 
Am I gagged with a fucking cum rag? <laughs> oh my god. The black wolf shrugs. I can't even contemplate the implication as my mind begins to spin out of control. What the fuck is going on? I ask myself in a pitiful squeak. The gray wolf looks to his companion. What language is that? Vanir? Freyr? How should I know? I don't speak human. What are they talking about? I understand them perfectly. Great. How are we going to explain this to him after you brutalize the kid? I was being gentle. Explain what? I ask them without even thinking what I'm doing. I notice both males looking at me wide-eyed, as if they've seen a ghost. For the first time, the Black Wolf shows an expression other than scorn. What is going on? The wolves briefly exchange gazes, looking back at me with the same surprise in their eyes. What? Oh. Ah, Alarm Chan. Oh, you broke it up. Oh, man. What a cliffhanger. Oh, I love it. It sets up the next episode perfectly. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and thank all of you who suggested Far Beyond the World. Um, I'm enjoying it so far. This is really cool. I love the artwork style. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Oh, and by the way, I'm, I'm talking with my artist right now about those badges. Membership levels are coming, and I'm going to have some awesome badges for you guys who want to sign up for, uh, who want to sign up monthly. So anyway, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!